Welcome back guys. In this video, we'll be discussing covalent bonds, but its particular aspects of it, which is homonuclear covalent bonding. Remember from Recall from our last video that we said that we have two major types of covalent bonds. Covalent bonds being an interatomic bonds, meaning bonds formed between two or more atoms could exist as homonuclear or heteronuclear. Homonuclear covalent bonds are bonds that are formed between two or more of the same atom, while heteronuclear bonds are bonds that are formed, covalent bonds that are formed between two or more of different atoms. So in this video, we'll look at first the homonuclear covalent bonds. I'm going to take a very typical example to see how the sharing would exist. Remember our Lewis dot structures as well? The outermost shared electrons written as dots around the atomic symbols. That is going to actually serve in this video. So let's see what we talk about here. Take hydrogen for instance. I want to form the bond, the covalent bond that exists between the hydrogen molecule H2. What I will simply do is to take the first hydrogen atom. Remember, H2 would mean that hydrogen is having two atoms. The molecule itself is formed from two atoms of hydrogen, meaning that uh, a bond is holding the atoms together. But how is this bond going to be shown? Two hydrogen atoms would mean I take, remember, hydrogen has one valence electron. I place a dot by the right hand side. The second hydrogen as well has one valence electron. It's going to be represented as a dot on that side, you see. And for convenience, and to rearrange this to show the bond, I will bring this dot to this other side so that it can get closer to the first hydrogen atom here. So, what I simply see here is two hydrogen atoms that are unstable initially trying to align together. To form a bond in chemistry you know, i established in one of our last videos that one bond represents two electrons one bond represents two electrons two bonds represents four electrons and three bonds meaning triple bonds two bonds means double bonds okay like this this is a single bond without the triple is this that's exactly what i'm trying to talk about these are all covalent bonds okay three bonds represents six electrons so we're going to see examples of how all of this plays out now having known this this is one electron from one hydrogen atom and another electron from the second hydrogen atom making two electrons they are going to combine to form a single bond this is how the H2 molecule is formed, and this is a covalent bond. Remember, a covalent bond is formed by the sharing of electrons. And so, that is an example that we have there. We move now to another popular covalent molecule, chlorine. Now, Cl2. Chlorine has a configuration 287. So, I am looking at two chlorine atoms coming together. 287 would mean seven atomoshell electrons for chlorine, meaning seven dots around the chlorine atom. And our format is to go right up, left, down. You know? So we're going that way systematically. One, two, remember we're counting to seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. As you notice here, these electrons are paired, meaning they are not going to form any bond. Remember, we said the reason why bonds are formed is because of the unpaired electrons that exist among atoms. Unpaired electrons are not stable, so they need to form a bond. And when they form this bond, they become paired and stable. That is the essence of the covalent bonds that we see around us. Now, this is these ones you see here are paired, meaning they are two electrons already. They are, they are okay, they are stable, but this is an unpaired electron in the chlorine atom. And so I'm going to segregate this by creating a cloud around it. So that I can know that there's a difference between the paired and the unpaired. This unpaired now would serve as the basis to form a bond with the second chlorine atom, which is basically the same process. So I am going to follow the same format I've been following all along. So as you can see, chlorine has three unpaired elect three paired electrons, but one unpaired. So these unpaired electrons will be used to form the bond that will form the chlorine molecule. In other words, if I were to rearrange this in this format, 
Okay, I just said I am only rearranging, mind you. I'm going to be having this. So this is just another way of writing what you have here. And so for this to be unpaired, to achieve stability, they have to come together to form a bond. So at the end of the day, I'll be having this bond holding. That is where CO2 is formed. I hope that is clear. Now, let's go to a compound or, or a homonuclear compound that forms a double bond so that you can understand another concept here. Now, we'll take oxygen. Oxygen is usually written as O2 and as such, we could say one atom of oxygen with the second atom of oxygen. Bring out its Lewis structure. Oxygen has a configuration first of 2,6, meaning it has 6 valence electrons or atmospheric electrons, meaning you are going to place 6 dots around the chemical symbol. In other words, I'm going with this format 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oxygen, as you can see, has 2 paired electrons and 2 unpaired electrons. Are you getting the picture now? These 2 unpaired electrons for both oxygens will form 2 bonds, a double bond. I was only trying to see if you got in the concept before I go ahead. Can you see it? I believe you can. So let's move. One, two, three, four, five, six. Recall that oxygen is two six. That is the essence of placing six out of our shell for our Lewis dot concept. So for rearrangement sake, I go this way. One, I place this paired electrons on one side, or better still, I put it down here. And for these two, I bring it side by side. Doesn't mean they are paired though, just for the arrangement sake, to form the bond we are talking about. And then I do the same for the second oxygen atom. Okay, and then, as you can see here, these two unpaired electrons for the first oxygen atom and the second one, they form bonds. This for this, and this for this and there we have it we have four electrons that form the double bond for oxygen so the oxygen molecule is actually formed by a double bond the double bond is holding the oxygen molecule together unlike the chlorine now how do we know this because oxygen has two unpaired electrons okay the two unpaired electrons has a tendency to form two bonds an atom with one unpaired electron has a tendency of forming a single bond an atom with three unpaired electrons has the tendency to form a triple bond. Now, that sounds odd, but let's see. Let's see what we're talk talking about here. We'll take another, the final example for this video. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is N2 as well as it's usually written in textbooks. So now, we can bring out the first atom of nitrogen and the second. Now, Nitrogen has a configuration 2,5. Remember, a prerequisite for understanding this particular topic we are treating is electron configuration and the valence electron. Lewis structure for nitrogen will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, meaning it has one paired electron and three unpaired electrons, as you can see there. And I follow suit for the next one. So, three unpaired electrons, one paired electron. The three unpaired electrons will try to form a bond with another atom. Remember they are unpaired, so they want to form a bond. Another name for unpaired electrons I forgot to mention is bonding electrons. Okay? Another name, unpaired electrons are also known as bonding electrons. Meaning they are electrons that want to form a bond so that they can be stable. Okay? So you take note of that so I rearrange this again and I'm going to come to this point if I'm to bring this to this part okay this paired electron and now place it on paired electrons side by side so that we can establish a chemical bond a covalent bond a homonuclear covalent bond so I'm going to be having the first unpaired with the first unpaired the first unpaired of the first nitrogen with the first unpaired of the second nitrogen from the first bond the second one with the second one of the second uh, bond, the third unpaired with the third unpaired of this forms the third one. And there we have it, N2 as in form, using three covalent bonds, what you call a triple bond. So the bond holding 
the N2 molecule together is a triple bond. The bond, sorry. The bond holding the Cl2 molecule together is a single bond. The bond holding the O2 oxygen molecule together is a double bond. And the bond holding the N2 molecule together is a triple bond. These are examples of homonuclear bonds. Okay. In our next video, I'm going to show you examples of heteronuclear covalent bonds. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me on the group. Tell me what you don't understand so that we can address it together. Thank you.